Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Under the Gun. I am John Friedberg, and we are right in the middle of the very slow time of the year as far as poker players are generally concerned. Um, we're really in like the post WSOP time of the year where not too much is going on. Most of us are just anticipating the um, upcoming WPT event in Los Angeles, the WPT Legends of Poker at the Bicycle Casino. Um, that's one of my favorite events to play in. I'll certainly be playing it this year. It's only $5,000 buy-in this year, which is uh, half of what it was last year. It used to be 5 k before it went up to 10 k a few years. Now it's back to 5 I think they're going to get a big turnout. I'm excited about it. But in the meantime, there's an even bigger event that is about to be starting online. It is the UB.com UBOC, the UBOC 5 series. It is uh, UB's online tournament series. And it starts August 18th, which is next, well, depending on when you see this, Wednesday of next week. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's 20 events and uh, all games, Hold'em, Omaha, Horse, Heads Up games, Six Max games, Bull Ring, you name it, it's on there. 20 tournaments starting October, no, sorry, August 18th. And it's uh, UB.com's UBOC5. If you don't have a UB account, check out my website, johnfreeberg.com. Or you can, of course, find your own way to get a uh, UB account, but uh, check it out. Um, so as far as you know, this time of year, it's been pretty slow for me. Aside from uh, you know other business stuff, I've really just been doing a lot of poker, uh, online poker grinding, and um, it's going pretty well. So with that said, let me jump into my Under the Gun Challenge update and uh, tell you guys what's been going on. All right, so this week in my Under the Gun Challenge, I, um, you know, let me say one thing first. I have two challenges going right now. One of them is to, like I said, win $100,000 playing cash games on UB, primarily low stakes. Um, the other one that I've been talking about is winning a uh, seat into the Legends of Poker through the UB Step Tournaments. And um, I told you I have two Step 10 tickets. I only yesterday found out why I never saw any Step 10s running, and that is because when you sort them in alphabetical order, uh, or when you you know sort them by order, it shows Step 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and the Step 10s are all the way down at the bottom after the Step 1. So the alphabetical order is a little bit weird there, and so I never even noticed those. So I was wondering why there weren't any Step 10s. Needless to say, I now know where the Step 10s are. I hope I see some running so I can try to win my seat into Legends. But the more important challenge is my cash game challenge. And I had a week, a very volatile week, which ended up slightly profitable. If you look at my chart here, uh, it looks like a giant W. I had a, uh, got off to a um, pretty bad start right away, down 1600 this week. Got all the way up to even, right back down to 1600 again, and then up about 500 and finished off around 200 hand, or sorry, $200 um, in the black. And uh, that was at right around 10,000 hands. So, you know, um, lots of big swings. But if you look at my year-to-date chart, which is um, from the beginning of the challenge up until now, yes, there's a lot of zigzagging in there, but you can absolutely see a trend in the absolute right direction where I'm looking to go. So um, I'm very happy with my progress. And had it not been for this gigantic cliff at the very beginning of my challenge where I drop $3,600 right away, um, I would probably be up, you know, about $3,000, which still behind pace, but I want to point out two things. First of all, I've only played 66,000 hands, and um, I think if I'm going to win $100,000 playing these cash games, I need to play at least 50,000 hands per month, and I'm now three months into the challenge, and 66,000 hands is absolutely pathetic. Um, I need to start playing more. However, obviously with the World Series and other things that have been going on, I haven't really had time. Um, but I've also decided that I'm planning on leaping um, up to some higher stakes pretty soon. Um, I'm up about $1,000 overall on my challenge, um, which you know isn't really appropriate necessarily to jump up in stakes. However, financially, I do feel comfortable playing in the 2-4 games. And I've been doing, I've been observing the games a lot, and what I'm noticing is a lot of the good players in the 2-4 games are the same as, you know, the players that I'm playing against. And what I'm trying to say is 
the good players in the 1-2 games are also the good players in the 2-4 games. So I feel that if I'm profitable in 1-2, I am likely to also be profitable in 2-4. So I think I'm going to start experimenting and playing in a couple 2-4 games and seeing how it goes because I'm way behind on this challenge and I need to get caught up. Now I told all of you last week that starting this week I'm going to have a new segment on my show and I'm going to call it Am I an Idiot? And what I'm looking to do is have you all submit your hands to me. And on this show, I will go. Th I will pick one or more hands and uh, basically discuss them and say whether or not you are an idiot and why. Now, oftentimes there are you know cooler situations where people feel like maybe they should have folded, or you know on the contrary, there's hands where people should have folded but they played super aggressive and they thought maybe they were coolers. A lot of people just don't know. And um, I just wanted to share some of my poker wisdom, much of it that I've accumulated recently in these cash games, um, and share it with you. So the segment's called Am I an Idiot? Submit your hands to me. Send all the details you can. Um, in fact, without all the details from the cards to the you know stack sizes, pot sizes, etc., without everything, um, I really can't make any judgment call or help you with it. So send in your hands to um, Under the Gun at cardplayer.com and I will select one on the show or more to talk about and uh, so let me break into that segment now and um, let's talk about some poker ah! so on this first very first segment of am I an idiot the um, player that submitted his hand was none other than myself I wanted to share one of my own hands with you first before I start sifting through all the emails and picking out one or the ones that were sent in from you all, um, this is a tricky hand that I played. It was in the 1 2 game on UB, and uh, I was in the big blind with King Jack offsuit and uh, a, a sort of a player I don't, didn't have much history with at the time had open raised an early position to seven, and everybody else folded. I decided to call five more, and uh, I'll make a note here that both of us were. Um, about $250 deep, which is about 125 BBs deep. And uh, so anyway, I just called pre-flop with the king jack off. Flop comes ace of hearts, king of hearts, jack of spades. And um, I did not have any hearts in my hand. And uh, so I checked my opponent bet 10 into a $15 pot. I check raised to 28 and he three bet to 89. Now. I don't have the graphics ready on this show. We will be getting some graphics so it's e easier to follow going forward. Um, this is a pretty simple hand. I flopped bottom two pair on an ace-king jack board against an early position raiser. I check raised him on the flop and he three bet me and I shoved. He ended up calling. He had ace-king. I did not pair my jack to win the hand and um, I lost the hand. And I think it, this is sort of a tricky situation. It's like it could be looked at as a cooler. But ultimately, I think, yes, I'm an idiot in this situation. I think I should have probably folded on the flop when I got 3-bet. Um, I really haven't discussed this hand with too many people, but in these cash games when, you know, even a check raise on a, a, on a board like that, generally people have, um, it's either, it's two pair or better. It's a lot of made hands, straights, you know, made hands. I guess an exception might be like the king X of hearts, where they flopped a straight draw and a flush draw. But anyway, when I get 3-bet that hand, it's time to fold. So I'm going to have to say on that particular hand, I played it bad post-flop, and yes, I am an idiot, but, uh, you know, live and learn. And, um, you, you know, it's kind of borderline if I should have even played the hand or not against an early position raiser that I didn't have any history with. But uh, I do feel that I'm fairly strong enough post-flop, or so I thought I was, um, to where I can, you know, take more flops. So... Anyway, I'm an idiot. Send in your hands under the gun at cardplayer.com and I will tell you if you're an idiot also. And now it's the time that you have all been waiting for. I have another female panel today. Seems like there's been a lot of women on my show lately, but uh, that's just sort of how it's been going. Um, my guests today are Maria Myrink and uh, Kara Scott. Both of these ladies are very well known in the poker world. Um, however, if you would like to hear more poker strategy, you're going to have to change the channel because from this point forward, we're going to be talking more about other things like 
maybe dating tips <laughs> for men and what it's like to be women in the poker world and what you and I can do to be more successful with the ladies. So with that being said, let's get these ladies on the show, Kara and Maria. Let's have them on. <laughs> so Kara Scott and Maria Myrink, thank you ladies both for coming on the show. It's nice to have you here. Nice to have a panel with females, finally. Oh, thank you. Thanks for inviting us. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So tell us real quick how you sort of became what you are today, how you're now both professional players, sponsored, all that good stuff. Uh, such a long story, but to make it very short, I guess I was at the right place at the right time, in the right gender, getting the correct <laughs> results, at that really small niche of time where everything was possible, and you know, being from Brazil, it's such a huge market for poker, like it's in two years, went from like country number 36 to country number 6 on poker stars so that just shows like how much more there is to grow and it's still like in its crawling stages so you know I had been working with the poker industry in Brazil right right from the start so I guess people already kind of knew me so it was it was easy it wasn't uh, easy for both of us it wasn't it kind of made sense and here we are okay <laughs> And you, Kara? Uh, well, I've been working in poker media as well for quite some time in England and hosting shows and doing a lot of reporting and working with some of the magazines as well. And had a few results, which was really nice. I mean, short-term variance kind of stuff. But uh, I got picked up by Party Poker in January, and I've been working with them, doing a lot of their TV stuff. And so I'm also a sponsored player for them as well and uh, go around to you know Canada because that's where I'm from as well as kind of being English at the same time. So I, I work between the two markets of Canada and England, and uh, yeah, it's it's been really exciting so far. The party doesn't sponsor too many players, right? Just no. Just a very small handful. That's true. We've kind of been expanding the team a little bit, so you know, there's a few more of us, but it's, it's a nice small team, and i got to be honest, it's great to be on a small team. Uh, there's a lot of really personal attention, and we know everybody, so you know, everyone's very supportive when you're doing well, or if you're not doing well, everyone's again very supportive, but... Yeah, I, I like the, the smallness of it. Jealous. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if you can answer this question, but will Party come back to the U.S. anytime soon? Uh, I suppose if the legislation changes and it's possible and okay. legal for them to do so. But until that point, then no, because they're you know fully in, in compliance with, uh, with the laws of the, right now here in the USA. So. Right. Okay, cool. So, I have to ask some questions here. There's lots of... Um, guys watching this show, really? and wow. um, maybe you ladies could offer us men some tips on dating. Or if we're in relationships, maybe you could offer us some tips on how to treat our women, you know, very well, <laughs> in a stable fashion, despite the fluctuating moods and swings in poker. What what could you tell? Like, if I'm dating a girl and I have a really bad day in poker. Obviously, I just want to go in there and, like, you know, throw knives at her, of course, and kick <laughs> the pets. You should not be dating. <laughs> well, I what, think, what advice can you give guys? I think that's, like, one thing that, you know, both Kara and I ended up being really lucky with because our boyfriends, they're, like, really level-headed. And, like, I, I've been with Bakes, David Baker, whoever doesn't know, uh, for, like, for a year now. And the thing that impresses me the most with him is really his mentality because the skill... You know, when people are playing at the level that he is, it's sort of, you know, everybody's kind of at the same, you know, with a little ups and tweaks and whatever, but his mentality is just so good. Like, I, I watch him go through, you know, normal swings, like in a week of, you know, I'm, you know, six figures, and at night he is fine. It's an another day at the office. There is zero tilt. Even during the 50K, he was the 50k event here at the World Series, he was very shocked because he was playing with all these like seasoned veterans who were tilting at the table and he was like surprised. He didn't say anything of course but he was surprised because you know it's your when, when it's your job and when you're playing at the level that these guys are playing, if they don't have like the logic or the mentality to really take these beats and be able to come through like you know Kara's boyfriend Brian once said to me one of the best things that I've ever heard is like when he's on a downswing which doesn't mean he's losing is he's just on a downswing it's when he's learning the most and I was like wow <laughs> you know because it really does open your eyes to certain things that you should be paying attention to and like another thing is you know poker really is not a part of our 
day-to-day -day relationship. We play when we have to separately because I still tilt and he doesn't. But at <laughs> night, we don't discuss it because we've had a lot of problems in the past. Like, I get defensive if I describe a hand to him and, and he's like, but why did you bet? And I'm like, because I knew he'd fold. He's like, that's not a logical <laughs> enough answer if you can't. And so we started fighting and I'm like, look, I'm a woman. I have female instincts. I know when people are going to fold. <laughs> and we started, to, so we just leave it out. But like, one of the nice things is like, for instance, yesterday we all had dinner at my house and you know, David had just busted from the 25k 6 max and as he's telling the hand to Brian and Brian is asking his questions of why he played the flop this way, the turn, the, the, you just sit there and you know, you that's enough for me to learn and grow with my game but we just kind of keep poker really out of it mm -hmm. and it comes from his mentality and stable, you know, stable capacity to really handle the swings. Yeah, I think we've created an atmosphere at some points in poker where it's okay to be really emotional about it and it's okay to be, you know, at the table to start tilting and it's something that people talk about online and it gets threads and forums and people think it's great if you're like really like a DJ and you're really balling at it, dude, whatever. I don't know. I, I just don't think that's great. It's still your job. Like, it's still all of our jobs. And if we're, you know, really level-headed about it, as much as we can be, then we're going to probably play better as well. And you're probably going to treat your girlfriends better as well if you're just, you know, you treat it like a job. Have, have either of you had experience dating poker players before you really got involved enough in the game to where you understood? I mean, right now you want, like, you just explained clearly that you understand what goes through the poker player's mindset and you understand tilt and everything. What about if you were just a random woman who was dating a guy and you knew nothing about poker? Well, I actually think that's a really good question because uh, in Brazil it's, it's such a macho country, you know, it's, you know, women are not like in the game at all and it, it's something that I'm always telling my poker friends and in any interview I give I'm like teach the women in your life to play because who knows there could be a huge talent there but even if there isn't you will get so much more support like you know your women will be it your girlfriend your sister your mother your your daughter whatever they will give you so much more support and when you have that supportive environment you play much better you know like my family was extremely against it right off the bat I come from like a super traditional Brazilian family you know like Catholic to the bone like old school imagine their only daughter saying ah, now I'm gonna go play poker they were like no you're not <laughs> and so it took me a long time to really convince them and this is something that if the guys start doing to the girls they don't have to teach them to play like to become the most amazing players but if they teach them about the game and about the lifestyle and about you know the swings and the effort that it takes people take a look and they're, they're probably thinking oh what a glamorous life like it really isn't it, it's exhausting it's so demanding on your energy and and it puts a strain on your relationship so it, it's really hard to find a balance and I only think that comes with time I think that a lot of like the you know the younger players who are it's a great generation it's not like people who just stumbled upon poker from being a degen and then you know picked up the game and had some, you know, it's like people who really sought out sought out the game and sought out the learning and you know try to get good these younger kids like they still have to work a little bit on their social skills, which is okay. Everybody does. I want to ask a question about that specifically. <laughs> oh, it's boy. funny that you you bring then such a smooth transition. So you and I were speaking before the camera started rolling about how I said I wanted to talk about giving some advice to poker players and you know how they could whatever dating women, etc. And you basically said poker players don't date women, and the no. reason for that. <laughs> The reason for that is because, is that true, Karen? Did I hear I that? I was saying, she I was that. saying like, okay. it's true. Okay. Because I a lot of them don't have the social skills or the, the game, if you will. So what now, now let's kind of, let's take it, let's take a turn here. Oh God, I'm going to get and so much flack for this. <laughs> Help that's me. okay. Okay. Well, okay. you even said it yourself and maybe I shouldn't go on camera no, saying this. No, that's fine. You had to do all the work. With, I did because, because, okay, what happens is this. They start playing really young, like around the time when they're 18. That's the time when you're like going to college, developing your social skills, you know, learning how to like really interact with people you've never met before. It's not like people you've been in school with your whole life. So at that time, if they lock themselves in the house and are playing you know 18 plus hours a day of poker you become a great poker player you really do but you might not 
you know, have developed the same kind of social skills. Okay, so let's let's cut to the chase. I'm an online geek poker player, right? So am I. Oh, well, yeah. I'm just I'm setting up a, a situation. Okay. Here, okay. I'm a guy that spends 18 hours a day in front of the computer. I don't have too many social skills. I'm an average looking guy and I want to meet a girl. What should I do? Or if I go, let's say I go to a, a World Series party or something where there's all these girls and stuff. What are some good lines that guys could approach girls Ooh. with that might be successful? Or not, forget about lines. What are some techniques or tips that you could give guys to approaching girls? Honestly, and I've gotten kind of flack for this in the past because I, I don't like lines and I always say you should just be yourself and be friendly and then guys go, yeah, but that doesn't work because girls want something different. Well, you need like a pitch. It's, so like it's a, tough, But right? the good girls don't want something different. But they, you need to get somebody's attention somehow. Hi, and a lot my of name guys, is so-and-so. Can I, can I get you a drink? Or And I'm a computer nerd and, you know, like, there is so much charm to, to honesty. I honestly I agree. Yes. Isn't there? <laughs> yeah. It's and true. But it's not about lines or no. picking up girls. I think it's much more about like when you're young and you know you get all the success in poker. All of a sudden, something does trigger in your mind, and you're like, I know everything. I have nothing else to learn. I think that's when you stop developing all other skills that you need to even to evolve as a human being, which reflects in your poker. So like a lot of young, you know internet players, which is where I'm from, and I'm friends with a lot of them, and I support everything. Like, I lived with the geekiest of all, okay? Stevie444, Steven Chidwick, who won 101 seats to the main event two years ago, was named rookie Player Rookie of the Year in Europe. Like, he's just amazing, but he used to... He made Supernova League twice in one year on Poker. So I was like, that, that shows you that this guy isn't going to the bathroom without his laptop. So I was like, come on, Stevie. You know, he's like my best friend. But, you know, I took him to Brazil. I introduced him to a bunch of people. Uh, you know, you really need to try to branch out. It's hard. I understand that. But you have to try to keep your um, an open mind. Mm -hmm. The minute your mind is open, things come. And, and and be humble. No matter how much success you have, be humble because this game teaches you daily how little you know of. Like you just you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. it's you a agree volume, with that, Carol? Yeah, it's a volume game as well in a lot of ways. I mean, if you're really nervous about meeting women, then you need to go meet women. You need to start and try and see what works. Exactly, for you. like tournaments. Like, you need volume yeah, for results. You need volume. That's what I'm. Gonna it say. is. A, yeah. Women are a very high variance game, <laughs> <laughs> if you will. So, so you just have to throw a bunch of shit at the wall and see what sticks, yeah, right? Yeah, but don't be too. Don't talk throw about shit it. at us. And yeah, we don't like that. That's generally not a good thing. Yeah. Right? But you, you don't be too slick about it either. Like, don't be too, I'm going to work on my game. I'm going to, you know, because we can kind of sniff that out. And if you want to just meet a, a nice, normal girl, then just be nice and normal. But what I'm, this is all bullshit. I'm really? going to call both of us out really? on that because our boyfriends did nothing. We had to... Okay. Go after yeah. them. Well, they had zero games. But that okay? makes sense if you're more. They did, Kara. Come on, <laughs> Brian and David. They were like zero. Bakes took six months to reply to a text message from me until finally I was like, I give up. Okay, so like the truth is, maybe a, a great girl will find you. Like that okay. also well, happens. What do, you th what do you think about guys that use money as an approach? Like they, no. they right away they run up and they they either Show talk about really I'm a professional watch. poker oh. player or. You know, I make all this money. I'm Do you a professional think poker player. It's kind of cool because it's always interesting. But um, I don't know. That depends. That could be quite successful with some girls. It's not really what I go for, but... <clears throat> Yeah, it depends mm -hmm. on who you're trying to attract, I guess. And depends on what qualities you want the women in your life to be with you for. Like. Mm -hmm. Okay, and where? Where should poker players go? Forget about bars and stuff because obviously no. that's, that's tough and yeah. whatever. But what, what would you tell the poker playing public... Um, about where to go in order to meet, through meet other some friends, beautiful ladies such as yourself. I, I agree. You know, friendship groups are really meet good place to meet other people. And if they're hanging out with people that you know, that already says something about, you know... Yeah, their character. Yeah, if yeah. you, you know, show me go what you Go bowling. Go, like, in a big group, mm -hmm. and then there's another big group of girls, maybe, and a bunch of guys can talk to the girls. I know it's, it sounds like I'm from the 50s now, but you can do <laughs> but that. But we are, because, like, Karen and I are kind of old <laughs> school. We don't go to clubs. I hate loud noise. Like, I hate loud. Anything that's loud, I'm just like, shut up. So a club is just a play. I've been coming to Vegas for six years now. <clears throat> I've been to three clubs. Like, I am not a club type person. Like, so meeting through other friends is really the best approach, I would say. And, you know, if, if, you, if you try to, you know, seduce a girl through, like, you know, 
wealth or whatever, it will work, but you're going to attract a girl that's interested in that. I'm not judging. Okay. I don't so, judge. Yeah, I understand. So, Kara, I have a question for you specifically. Okay. A lot of people see you on TV, right? Uh-huh. From the various whatever. ridiculous amounts yes, of things that of I've course. done. Yeah. And Do, she's so pretty. Aww. And she's so pretty. <laughs> Do you find that guys are often intimidated by you? Like when they come up to you, are they almost like it's, tripping over themselves? And is that a turn off for you? I mean, is, isn't no. confidence kind of a big part of... Confidence is really nice. Overconfidence is terrible. I'd say um, a little bit of shyness is a lot more attractive than overconfidence. And I, I used to think that people would come up and they'd be awkward with me, and I th would think it was because they were a great poker player and they were kind of looking down on my minuscule results, <laughs> or they were being. And I was really defensive about it. And then someone very wise told me that a lot of these people, I mean, they're younger and they spend a lot of time on the internet, and a lot of these guys are not very good at being social, and this is their attempt. And then I was like, oh. Okay, so I'm being defensive because they're being kind of strange with me and I'm thinking, well, you know, is there something on my face or are they making fun of me? And they're not. They're just using their own approach. So any approach is a good approach. Just and just volume trying is always a really good thing and see the way she was feeling is the way many guys feel like everybody has their huge insecurities yeah. like and we do too as women and it's really important for the guys really? to realize oh my god yeah, we do. are you kidding me yeah yes i am come on <laughs> like we're full of imperfections and that's what makes not just us every one of us and that's what makes us like interesting and unique and capable of evolving if you keep an open mind and really try to just be a good person you know that has nothing to do if you're young if you're on the internet if you don't have social skills Skills. For every tired foot, there's an old shoe, you know? So, wow. the, like, like they don't it. have to be worried. There are plenty of fish out there in the sea, as they know. Good advice. And just, <laughs> and you know, both poker and women. And treat people well. And treat your mothers well as well. Because that really develops like that. a way to treat women well. Mm -hmm. Like, you never treat a woman the way you would not treat your mother, for instance, or your sister. I have two brothers, so that taught me a lot of the way a man is supposed to treat me. And I really don't put up with any crap. She doesn't. I really don't. She really doesn't. Awesome. I don't either. Neither do you. Well, on that note, that's about all the time we have. So thank you both so much for coming in, Kara. Thanks it was so great much. to meet you. And thank you, John. Maria, also, thank you for having, or thank you for coming. It was great to have you. It was great coming yeah. here. Awesome. Fun. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of Under the Gun. Um, two things. Remember, send me your detailed hands so we can uh, discuss them on the show. Under the Gun at cardplayer.com. And secondly, as of today, Monday, I have 945 followers on Twitter. I told you when I had about 600 that when I hit 1,000, I was going to pick one for a free poker lesson. I'm 55 people away. So follow me on Twitter for your chance to win a free poker lesson, at John Friedberg. And thanks again for tuning in. I will see you guys next week.